Okay, let's talk about neutralization reactions. Uh, a neutralization reaction is when an acid combines with a base or reacts with a base. And the thing about neutralization reactions, they're pretty easy when it comes down to it. Um, they will always make a salt plus water. Now, you've got to get your mind out of the fact that salt is NaCl. NaCl is a salt, but salt is a class of chemicals. Typically, um, just think of a halogen with an alkali or alkaline earth metal, and those are salts. So potassium chloride, potassium fluoride, calcium uh, fluoride, calcium chloride, those are all salts. So a salt plus water, and you can even have some polyatomics in your salts as well. Uh, so an example uh, would be hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide. This is an acid, this is a base, uh, and one thing about neutralization reactions is they're double replacement, so you already know how to do this. So do a double replacement reaction here, and uh, what you'll get is the H, we'll switch that with the Na, and we'll get the Na with the Cl. So in this case, you actually do get salt, table salt, and the H will be with the OH, and you'll get HOH, which is also uh, known as water. And so that's just a simple neutralization reaction. We can look at another one, uh, like sulfuric acid. Uh, combining with, uh, we'll go with calcium hydroxide. This is an acid-base pair, acid-base reaction. Uh, the H will switch with the Ca, and so move those things around. The Ca comes over here with the sulfate. So you'll have a calcium sulfate. If you're looking at your charges, calcium is a 2 plus, sulfate is a 2 negative, so we're okay with our formula there. And the H will be with the OH. Um, don't bring this 2 over here. Um, just do charges. H is a 1 plus, OH is a 1 negative, so we get HOH, which is water. Just remember, it's always HOH on the water one. Uh, don't try and do this as H2OH or something like that. Um, and so that's an acid-base reaction. It's really, really easy. It's just a double replacement neutralization reaction makes salt and water, or a salt and water. Um, the reason why it's called neutralization is because the acid and the bases will neutralize each other if you have equimolar amounts. Um, and we'll get back to a pH of 7 to a pH that's neutral. Um, the acid would obviously have a pH that's less than 7. The base would have a pH that's greater than 7. If you put equal amounts, equal concentrations, when I use the term there a second ago, equimolar, equal moles of them together, then we'll get back to a pH of um, 7, um, and we'll have a neutral solution. And so that's why they're called neutralization reactions. And so uh, neutralization reactions are really, really easy as far as, uh, hey, just finish out a reaction for me. I'll give you the left side. So, for example, a test question might be uh, perform the acid-base neutralization between carbonic acid and potassium hydroxide. All right. I mean, that's pretty easy. We've done lots of uh, completing the reactions types. So do your double replacement. You'll get potassium carbonate and water. Don't forget your carbonate's got a 2 negative, potassium is a 1, so we'll get a K2CO3 on the potassium carbonate. And so that's it. Uh, just know as a matter of definition that these are your products of an acid-base reaction. We mix salt and water, um, or a salt and water. Now, what if we wanted to talk about more about concentrations and volumes? Well, we can do an equation, uh, VAMA equals VB. MB. And this looks a lot like your dilution equation, which was uh, V1, M1 equals V2, M2. So the volume and molarity of solution 1, or the stock solution, the volume and molarity of the diluted solution, it's the exact same format of the equation. But in this case, the A's represent acids, and the B's represent bases. And so if I take a quantity, a volume, a quantity of an acid with a certain concentration, and I want to know the volume or the molarity of the base that will neutralize. This is a neutralization reaction. Um, neutralization. We want to know what those neutralizations will be. Then we can use this formula. Um, and so let's do an example. So what is the molarity of a 25.0 milliliter solution of sodium hydroxide that was neutralized by 4.5? Five, that should be milliliters. Oh, 4 point, oh that's 4.51. Sorry about that. 4.51 milliliters of 1.5 molar um, HCl. And so we'll just use this equation up here. So the volume of our acid, the molarity of our acid equals the volume of our base times the molarity of our base. 
And so what's the volume of our acid? Well, our acid is the uh, HCl. And so this is our acid information right there. And so the volume of our acid is 4.51 milliliters. And that's going to be multiplied by the molarity of our acid, which is 1.50 molar concentration. And the base up here is 25 milliliters is the volume of our base, 25.0 milliliters. And that leaves us the unknown as the molarity of the base, because that's the question. What is the molarity? And so there's your equation. Really simple. Plug your numbers in. Now we're going to do our algebraic solution. We're going to divide both sides by 25.0 milliliters. I will cancel over here. 25.0 milliliters over here. So over on the right side, we just get the molarity as our answer. And then we just do our mathematics here. And that is 4.51 times 1.50 divided by 25. And that gives us a numerical answer of 0.27. We can actually have three significant digits here, so we can add a zero here, 0 0.270 exactly. Uh, and then unit-wise, uh, you've got a milliliter here that cancels a milliliter there, and it leaves you an M, and so that does match our variable there. So 0.27 molar is the concentration of that base. And so this little equation allows us to calculate unknown molarities or even, how, hey, how much do I need to add to neutralize? And that would be the volume. If I know how much, I just calculate for the volume of the acid or base that I don't know. And so that is a simple little neutralization reaction. You can do this in a titration lab. You could figure it out beforehand. Um, or if you knew the volume, if you knew the molarities, you could figure out the volume beforehand and then actually confirm it. Or if you did not know um, the uh, molarity, you could titrate to find out the molarity, and that would be giving you the quantity here that you plug in. A titration would give you this quantity. And so that is our basic neutralization uh, information.